Hello, it is Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so like yesterday, we should have a fairly approachable puzzle today with a theme that isn't too challenging. And this approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Laura Sexton, Alex, and as always, by the inestimable Hood Monster, by the invaluable Timothy Mark, by the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and by the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for bringing us this particular edition and for directly supporting this channel and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that. So thank you to them, but also thank you to everybody who has contributed to the Patreon campaign at any level. And if you'd like to join their ranks and get access to all of the daily videos that have, not <laughs> quite daily, I suppose, but weekly videos that have gone up on the Patreon channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up uh, each additional week, then you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video as well. And what else? You can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug if you become a benefactor. And at any level, you can get access to an additional channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. But the Daily Solve, Dif Solve Discord chat server, where you can spend time with other members of this community, is free for anybody to join. And there's a link in the description field to that as well. Um, also, thanks to everybody who subscribed to the channel. As I said yesterday, we hit 9,000 subscribers yesterday, which was very exciting. So thank you to everybody who played a part in that. Uh, and... Finally, I wanted to, uh, this is a day late, so I'm very sorry, Max, but uh, Max, who's a, a viewer of the channel, it was his birthday yesterday. So happy birthday, Max Hawthorne. And thank you for watching. Hope you had a great birthday, even though I'm late in wishing as such. And let's get on to the puzzle itself. This is a Tuesday puzzle as stated by Karen Steinberg. This is Karen's second crossword for the New York Times. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get solving. Okay, what do we have? Alan of Marriage Story. Oh, oh I saw that. I saw that film. Uh, was Alan Alda in that film? I can't remember. Midsize Nissan. Well, it's starting with an A would be plausible. I just Sorry, I didn't even notice. We have this interesting snaking pattern of circled cells running through running through the middle of the grid. And what's interesting as well is that the grid is symmetrical about a vertical axis. So it's un unlike most New York Times crosswords, it's not radially symmetrical. In other words, if you rotate this grid, the black cells would not remain in the same position. But if you folded it about a, a, a line running north-south, it would be. And often, that's be often that happens when there's some kind of artwork being depicted in the grid. And it sort of looks like there is, but I can't quite tell. Maybe these are, maybe this is sort of a stylized face. Can't quite tell. It might be, it might be more to facilitate the construction of this circled pattern snaking around these, these black cells. That might be more of the rationale for that form of symmetry. Anyway, I don't know what it's about, but let's, we'll figure it out eventually. Oh, uh, light time, day? day, as in day and night. Is this going to be night? It is. Dark time is night. Okay. So here's night and here's day. And I figured they would probably be symmetrical and they are. So this must be part of the theme, I would think. And this says approximate length of 57 across day. Is it 12 hours? No, it's not nearly enough letters. What was I thinking? Approximate length of a day. Well, day is 24 hours, but I was thinking if we're defining it into day and night, perhaps it was half of each. Maybe it, maybe it is 24 hours. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, at least it seems like it might be. What about this? Put off to later is to defer, say, a decision. One end of a battery is an anode. Want to participate? You might say you in. Id restrainers, the ego restrains the id in the Freudian id ego superego um, tripartite kind of psychological explanation. Leftovers are what? 
Tight-fitting women's garment. A corset would be a very tight-fitting women's garment. All right, fine with me. It's okay. Hmm. Danish shoe manufacturer. Not sure. What about this? Understand informally. Oh, could it be Grok? Which I think of as less informal and more, I don't know, sort of jargony. It's a reference to, is it Robert Heinlein? Or, or no, is it Aldous Huxley? I can't remember. It's one of, it's a, uh, means to understand from a sci-fi novel, but I don't remember which one. I think I read it. I think I read it in high school. Anyway, leftovers are the, ah, I still don't see it. Sorry. The Spartans of the NCAA for short. So that's, uh, University sports in the U.S., and I think it's USC, University of Southern California. Oh, this is surprising. Maybe it's not. Leftovers. Uh, maybe th maybe this isn't Grok. Maybe maybe that's why it was informally. Well, no, it's the use that looks strange, isn't it? Something I, I'm I'm doing something wrong, and I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> uh, honey yellow color would be amber. One small sample, one small sample specifically. Why is it one and not simply small sample? What does that mean? Take a note of things like that, because there's no reason, if you simply wanted to communicate a small sample, you wouldn't need to say one small sample. So there must be a reason that's there, either because of the emphasis of the one or because of the specific quantity. Toffee candy bar brand. I'm not sure about that either. Pitcher's asset would be their arm in, in um, uh, baseball. Italian city known for its salami, Genoa. Genoa salami is well known. And an OBGYN, an obstetrician gynecologist. Word on the smallest current U.S. coin. A oh, words, I'm sorry. Words would be one dime. Very small coin, the 10 cent coin. 10 cent piece. Puccini opera set in Rome would be Tosca. And, well, that doesn't help with anything over there that was going on. <laughs> Toffee candy car brand. I just, uh, candy bar. I just don't know what this is. All right. What about this? Ann Arbor, Michigan. There's a city in Michigan. Oh, and this is actually a good thing to mention. Somebody asked in a comment yesterday, why in a clue, California, the U.S. state was abbreviated Calif, C-A-L-I-F period with, but then the answer was not abbreviated. Usually in the New York Times crossword, Here's an example. When there's an abbreviation in the clue, movie co, movie company, with a presence at Sundance, that abbreviation, abbreviation of abbreviation, sorry, of company to co will indicate that the uh, that the answer is also abbreviated. That's a little, it's a just it's a little hint in that direction. And so this answer will be an abbreviation, I'm, I'm certain. But that is not the case in where was it? Uh, it's not the case here because U.S. states, there's simply a convention in the New York Times crossword that they can be abbrevi abbreviated to this long form abbreviation. In other words, M-I-C-H rather than M-I or C-A-L-I-F rather than C-A. And that doesn't indicate, it doesn't indicate an abbreviation. And you just have to know that. You may, you may <laughs> cry foul and that's fair enough. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you, but so it is in the New York Times crossword. Anyway, I sort of suspect this is Alan Alda or Alan Alda, I suppose, because of that A there, and because, honestly, Alan, with a four-letter surname in the New York Times crossword, is almost always Alan Alda. Okay, descriptor of the 1%, low-fat milk. That's funny. That's very good. Uh, like jigsaw puzzles, puzzle pieces produced by machines. Die cut? Yeah, I think that's right. They're cut from a, cut from a, a, a die that has a, a preset shape. Tender meat cut would be a loin. A loin. Um, I was <laughs> I was at a live interview with Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who is the Speaker of the House of Commons of the UK Parliament, last night, and uh, it was very very good. But he said. So he represents his parliamentary seat. He represents a constituency called uh, Chorley, Chorley in, the, in the north of England, in Lancashire. And he said 
that sirloin, the cut of meat, is named as such because the king, the king at the time, and I don't remember which king uh, he, he claimed this was, had come to Chorley specifically. He was saying this was a bit of local history from his constituency and was served a beef loin that was so tender and wonderful that he dubbed it, that he knighted it, Sir Loin. And that's where Sirloin comes from. I have no idea if that's true. <laughs> I didn't look it up afterwards. I, I intended to, and then I, for, I forgot to after the after the show had ended and I was heading home. And now I'm passing the story on to you, and I have absolutely no idea if there's any truth to it or if it's complete nonsense and it's just the kind of thing that, that gets passed around and people say, or maybe he was just be, being kind of sly about it. I don't know. He really, he told it as though it were definitely true, and I, I don't know if it is. But I'm very curious. <laughs> anyway, mid-sized Nissan oh, Altima, Nissan Nissan Altima. I've I've heard that. For, uh, I've heard of that car. Is what I mean to say. Handles very roughly. Is mauls uh, you rough somebody up? You maul them. To go on the offensive is to attack. And frilly and delicate, frilly and delicate uh, material would be lacy material. And to raise Cain is to cause trouble, um, driving as far as I know from Cain and Abel in uh, uh, the biblical story of Cain and Abel, the brothers in the Garden of Eden. And NBA legend Jason, this is not a name with which I'm quite as familiar, uh, not sure. Counterpart of rouge and roulette. So rouge is red and roulette and the counterpart would be black, which in French is noir. There we have it. Accomplish on behalf of. If you accomplish something on behalf of somebody, you do it for them. I think it's probably as straightforward as that. Jason, looks like it could be Jason Kidd. That's a name that would fit here. Fashion designer Von, Von Furstenberg. Not sure. Maybe I'll recognize this, but I don't think it's a name I'm familiar, enough familiar with to, to get right off the bat. Organization concerned with air traffic is the Federal Aviation Authority, FAA. Actress, comedian Issa, Issa Rae, who uh, created the excellent series Insecure. Top notch is A1, perhaps. And, oh, Diane von Furstenberg. I do think I've seen that name. I do think, but I couldn't tell you anything about her necessarily. I just think it's triggering a bit of famili general familiarity. One of nearly 15,000 in Manhattan. Uh, acre, I would assume this to be. 15,000 acres in Manhattan? I don't know. Seems plausible to me. <laughs> I've never had a good handle on acres, to be honest with you. One small sample. Right, we'll come back to that. And like one's legs after too many squats, say. It could be achy. Achy legs. And toffee candy bar brand. Oh, Heath? Is that what this is? I don't really think I know what a Heath bar is. I've, I've heard of it. I don't know that I've ever had one. Potato salad ingredient for short would be mayo, mayonnaise. And what else can we do? Leftovers. Oh, crumbs. Oh, so I guess this was grok after all. Now, what did I do that didn't seem right? Oh, I was completely wrong about the Spartans. It wasn't USC. Sorry about that. That's embarrassing. Claim to know something about sports, and I should never do that. Because it's essentially never true. So, MSU... Missouri or Mississippi or Montana State University? I don't know. I, there's probably another one that I didn't say, and that, that's the one. All right. Fine with me is OK Shore and Danish Shoe Manufacturer's Echo. Kind of looks slightly familiar. I'm not sure. OK. One small, ah, one small sample is a taste, right? So a small sample could be t a taste. So if it simply said small sample, the answer could be taste, but we are particularly in, we're in particular saying one small sample is a taste. There we go. An apt name for a car mechanic could be auto, just evokes the, an automobile. That's all. All right. So what is, what does this look like? Cadian, oh, circadian rhythm. This is referring to one's internal body clock that governs the kind of natural instinctive day-night cycle. So circadian rhythm is the theme of the crossword today. There we go. 
Great. And there will be something related to the knight. I don't remember what that clue said. Nimble for one's age is spry. It's often used to refer to um, people on the older side who are still very agile and active. That's not true is a lie. Urgent, urgent. Red alert. Yeah, that looks right. Multicolored in blotches is pied. Yeah, you know, not such a common word in the in the modern era, but yeah, that, that is what that means. Uh, could uh, some animals could be described as as pied? I suppose wood for a grilling plank, cedar wood. You hear about that used in grilling. Now I get it. Aha! And here we have physicist George with electrifying discoveries. Uh, it doesn't seem right. I'm glad I checked the crosses on that because this would be ohm. Um, which uh, the surname of which lent its name to the unit uh, in physics. And then, now I get it, it's simply ah, I suppose. Okay, fair enough. Usually this is, in the crossword, this tends to be uh, A-A-H, as opposed to A-H-A, tends to be associated with relaxation, that sort of thing, but it still works perfectly fine. Start of a conclusion, you could say thus... Ah, uh, has two H's in this case, I don't know. Pull some strings could be to strum a guitar or other string instrument. And the question mark there indicates that this is a bit of a pun. Bit of, bit of wordplay there. It's warmed at Chipotle. Oh, <laughs> I was wrong yet again. Thus, I have to remove this A. Now I get it. Oh, that's better than the A. Okay. So once I, aha, would have been, I think, the most obvious fill, but then once it had two H's, O is better than A. Ah. It's just one of those funny things that I guess as a native speaker of a language makes sense and probably makes no sense to, uh, if you aren't one. Okay, it's warmed at Chipotle, a tortilla. And what synopses summarize plots of a film or a book or something? To kill it at the comedy club, to slay, to cl club is to slay what you know, comedians call it when they're really on fire and they're the, the audience is, is eating it up. Male meower would be a tomcat, male cat. City with a little Havana neighborhood, cer uh, little Havana neighborhood, certainly Miami, uh, due to its proximity to Cuba. And small ornamental loop is, oh, is it a, a, a pico? I think that's what that's called. P-I-C-O-T? I think that's right. Uh, fit well together is to mesh. And retort to I am not. Are so? I am not. Are so. This kind of thing comes up in the crossword all the time. There are all sorts of different, not maybe not all the time, but not infrequently. There are all sorts of different configurations of it. Am, to, are not are so, you know, all, all, all the different sort of combinations of first and second person and singular and plural. And uh, anyway, it's just one of those things. A beer barrel could be a keg, perhaps. And what else? Alma mater referring to your, uh, the school you attended. Grub could be eats as in food in an, infor in an informal sense. Not slack could be taut, as in a rope. If the rope is not slack, it is taut. And a bird related to the cassowary is an emu. There we go. That's, that's certainly right. That looks sort of similar. They look like they're related. Warmed at the... Oh no, sorry. Warmed the bench. Warmed the bench. Uh, sat. You, you aren't playing. You aren't currently on the field. You're warming the bench. And here we finally have our other theme clue. Body's internal clock patterns regulated by the phenomenon seen in the circled letters. So the phenomenon in this case being circadian rhythm. And that is what sleep-wake cycles it looks like based on this the crosses. Yes, sleep-wake cycles. There we go. That's, oh uh, yeah, it's, I'm all, it's always interesting when you encounter themes like this where you have these two, the, the crossword constructor managed to find two phrases each of which is directly related to the theme in question that have exactly the same number of letters. It's just sort of a funny coincidence that 24 hours and sleep-wake cycles have the same number of letters, but there's it's 
I, I'm sure that she massaged it to help that become the case. There's probably a term for sleep-wake cycles that isn't exactly this, but is similar and has a different number of letters. Or there were other phrases related to day, night, and circadian rhythm that she could have used that she didn't because they weren't the same number of letters. So there, there were probably some various candidate phrases she was comparing. And I, I always, it's always interesting to imagine what, what goes on in the construction of a theme like this. And then of course, circadian rhythm has many more letters than that, but it does very cleanly fit into this, in this pattern. Anyway, uh, she, her, hers would be pronouns and Mauna Loa University, oh, sorry, observatory. I have a, a, quite a few strange sort of reading and speaking lapses today. Anyway, feature of an impala or an impala. So the first impala is used as um, the animal, lower, lowercase i, and then an impala with the capital I used presumably as the, is it a Chevrolet, model of a Chevrolet, it's a car. A horn, oh, that's funny, yes, because the animal has a horn and the car has a car horn that you that you blow, that you honk. Many characters in Guardians of the Galaxy are aliens, presumably, that makes sense. Uh, it's one of the Marvel films. And Blank Lama, Dalai Lama, the, uh, the priest. And freeway a religious leader more than more than just a priest freeway free freeway feature is a ramp an on-ramp or an off-ramp as they would call them in the u.s and long ways to go are limitless they're literally long ways to go somewhere long methods of transportation and a garment worn with a choli is a sari i hope i pronounced that correctly um indian Indian garments, and then a voter in a certain early caucus is an Iowan in the U.S. Um, Iowa, the, the U.S. state, is very pleased about its status as uh, conducting its primaries very early when it's selecting presidential candidates. And there we go. So I think that was another very, very I think very another very approachable crossword. I, um, I, I happened to, I forget why this worked out, but it, the way that I solved the puzzle, I, I happened to get onto the theme pretty quickly. I didn't jump ahead and try and figure out what was going on with circadian rhythm, but, but the day night came in pretty quickly in the 24 hours thing. I guess I thought that was going to be 12 hours because I thought day and night was each referring to, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, this is, I think, a very good follow-up to yesterday's puzzle. I think yesterday's puzzle was a very clean, straightforward Monday puzzle, very simple, with a very simple theme. This is a great follow-up to that, I think. If you if yesterday was a great puzzle for a beginner, today's would be a great puzzle to follow that one up. Maybe not the first puzzle you'd give somebody, but maybe the next one to, to indicate, look, themes can get a little bit more intricate, not overwhelming. There's nothing about this theme that's that's particularly difficult or, or challenging or strange, but but it is just, it is a little more whimsical with the circadian rhythm running through the grid in this way. And it's a bit more involved. We have answers pointing to each other and connecting in this, in this big thematic way. And, and it's just a, it's just a bit, it's a slightly more ambitious puzzle, but it's still not, uh, it's still not particularly difficult. I would say it's still, it's still very approachable as far as, as far as the crossword goes. So yeah, great, a great, a couplet of crosswords that I think are great exemplars of early week New York Times crosswords. So well done to Karen Steinberg for this puzzle. And, and that's that. I really enjoyed it. So now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. How about that? We have from the pain whale, a bit more, <laughs> a, a bit of information about Panko the uh, Japanese breadcrumb style, which I am pronouncing panko because Dragon Traces in a reply here says, though commonly, commonly pronounced panko, it is more properly pronounced panko. So thank you, Dragon Trace. I said that wrong yesterday, surely. Anyway, the pain whale says the story behind panko, which I think I mentioned yesterday that it's, it's, it's electrocuted breadcrumbs, which it is. And the story is that Japanese soldiers in World War II cooked their bread by hooking it up to tank batteries because they didn't want to start a fire and alert the enemies to their whereabouts. 
And uh, yeah, it's an, it's an amazing origin story. And uh, Ponko is a particularly, as it turns out, that is an, a particularly great way to produce your breadcrumbs because of the because of its it, the various properties that results in in, in, ter- in terms of it how it deals with moisture and things like that. Anyway, can't remember all the food science behind it, but Ponko is an it's an interesting product. That is, uh, it's not just a sort of different cut of of breadcrumbs. It really is a different product that is actually superior to traditional breadcrumbs in various ways. And Kathleen Quinn says, to answer your question, Chris, about angels playing harps, angels are said to play harps in Revelation 5.8. However, other biblical references indicate that angels also play lutes, flutes, lyres, and of course, trumpets. So very good. Thank you, Kathleen Quinn. My, my idle musing, as I, as I should have expected, was, was promptly answered. And finally, Old Footer explains laurels are evergreen shrubs. So there we go. Another thing that I was sort of uh, stumblingly musing about yesterday. Laurels, yes, they are indeed uh, plants unto themselves, evergreen shrubs. So thank you for that. And I think that was it. So I think that means that's it for today's puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday crossword, which might be a little bit of a step up in difficulty. I always think of Monday and Tuesday as kind of being difficulty companions, and then Wednesday is maybe a little bit of a step up. So we'll see. We'll see if that holds. And please do join me for the Wednesday crossword. But until then, do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. (laughs) 